So this is the book, Prophecy. <clears throat> it was after 2008. And I said, the biggest crash was coming. It's here now. Yeah. And the question again, and, and that- the guys, and, and they're still fighting it and it's still gonna happen anyway. But why does We're this- fight about it. It's gonna get what? worse than people think even now when it's finally starting to get go down despite endless- I, I, I understand. So my question again is- I, I'm, I'm talking to your audience, not you, Robert, okay? Yeah, why don't- why I know don't, you understand. Why don't people listen to idiots like us? <laughs> why do they believe these guys? Like, you know, have you heard of the uh, Kramer factor, Jim Kramer? <laughs> Whatever Kramer predicts, you go short. I can't even mean? watch this guy. He's, the, I, I, he's, a, he's a smart idiot. He just <laughs> entertains. He has nothing to do with the truth. All I do is research what happens in history and, and what causes things and what doesn't. And that's the truth. So and you do not get a bubble like this. There has been no bubble every time, any time in all the history that has not burst badly and rapidly I, when it does. And it's already started. And uh, people are still in denial, included stupid Kramer. <laughs> <laughs> He's an idiot. Doesn't he not look like an idiot? Does he act like an idiot? Well, he's like a duck. He's a so duck. Harry. Harry, my question to you is, is it one of the problems is people choose the wrong prophet? Well, no, they, they choose what they want to hear. Every, yes. If you're in a boom and you're invested in the boom, I mean, everyday people didn't used to have so much money in stocks. It was more in real estate. And real estate does not go down like stocks does. Real estate is more stable even when it goes down. And they everybody now has to root for this thing to keep going. And so they'll listen to the people that say, oh, no, don't worry about this. Don't worry about debt levels. Don't worry about demographics declining, which they're declining at the speed of light in all developed countries in the world. Uh, somehow the government will bring us out of this. Uh, so Kim, yeah, Kim, Kim. We got, hey, Harry, we're, we're, we're the new age men. We're going to give the yeah. And so we're not going to be listened to until we're right, and then it'll be too late. That's my point. Well, I, got, I, got, I got two comments, and to your point, Harry, of course, if you're if you're vested heavy in the stock market, you only want to hear that the stock market's going to keep going up. That's what you're going to pay attention to. My question is then, you're on the demographics of the baby boomers, they, they went at, at their peak in 2007. What's yeah. the impact of millennials? Are they going to have okay. a... The millennials bring us up through natural causes instead of printing money from 2024. And I, I'm very precise about this. I said from the beginning, the baby boom thing was gonna peak in late 2007. I said that in the eighties. That's how <laughs> predictable people earning and spending money as they age are in generational surges. And the baby boom was a big surge. So of course, a great boom. So We've been down ever since then. The millennials do not bring the upward natural momentum until 2024, and they will peak by 2037. Much shorter boom than the baby boom. So what? So when was what was it? You know, boomers uh, were like 50. I mean, 46 to 64 was a boom generation. Was there was a Gen X beat behind us? Yeah. Okay. Let me be more precise. What's Gen X, because let's let's First go turned up. Graphics, turned up. Great noticeably from 1937 into 61. That's the rising baby boom, which on a lag, predictable, quantifiable lag for peak spending at 46, moving towards 47, would have given us a peak in late 2007. I've been preaching that since the 80s. And people, <laughs> people back then were saying, Harry, you're crazy. The US is done. Asia's taking over. Japanese make us look like idiots, you know? And I'm like, yeah, yeah, they're growing and they're going to grow longer, but we still have the greatest baby boom in the world and we're going to have the greatest boom in history until 2007 and then it's going to clap. Who is Gen X and what's their challenge now? Because that's a large generation, too. not a large. Gen, Gen X is the declining birth rates from 1961 into 73 to 75 that, would, that caused the slowdown from 2008 still into 2022, 23, before the millennials born after them take it up. And even the millennials, here's the important point, and nobody gets this, okay? Even the millennials with their spending power as a smaller generation, less long in birth, only take us back to where the baby boomers took us. We only get back to even adjusted for rising productivity. We will never see a boom like 1983 to 2000 again in the US and most of the developed world will never and Europe's okay. already behind us. Okay, so, That's the, the truth. so my question is, what's gonna to happen to Gen X? Cause they're the sandwich, they're sandwiched right now. They're the spread. Oh. Well, they're causing the slowdown 
but they kind of benefit because when asset prices go down eventually, which they aren't yet, the government won't let, when they do finally crash, they're going to be able to invest at more reasonable prices again and, and be able to invest from time. I tell you, anybody right now in the markets, whether it be bond markets at the lowest interest rates ever long term or stock markets, the highest valuation, if you invest today, even with no predictions of up and down economy, you're likely to make, you know, a couple percent a year for the rest of your life. You're not going to be able to retire profitably until the markets come down to reality and you can invest. Before we continue, help us clicking that YouTube like button and subscribe now to our channel. This shows the algorithm that you valued this information. And it helps us spread that message. Sharing is caring. And now, let's continue. I have bad news for you. If you're not rich by now, you're screwed. And if you're in debt, you're even double screwed. How so, you might wonder. Well, the sad truth is that you're working your whole life to make someone else rich. The mega corporations, the banks, the politicians, everyone is getting richer. They get your money. And what is even worse, they get your time, they get your life. You are not even in a rat race, you're in a financial prison. But what could a solution for you look like? Honestly, I don't know, but I know what a solution for me would look like. It's very simple. I use whatever money I have and I multiply it with 1000. This could make my life much easier and probably yours as well. If you have $1,000 available and multiply this with 1000, I believe that this could solve some financial issue for the one or the other. Of course, if you're ugly, you would have to multiply it with much more than 1000. My name is Marco Stan, and this is what I decided to do. I decided to 1000x my money. This is not a joke. I know what you may be thinking. You know, what, what, what is this guy talking about? You know, how should this work? This is not possible. Well, I made a detailed video where I laid out my plan. And some clever folks might even want to look at this plan and copy it and do exactly what I do. This is just a little hint on the side. You have two options. You leave, you forget what you have seen. You do whatever you're doing and you hope that somehow you get some other results. Good luck with that. Or you click the link below the video. You enter your email address because I'm not showing this to everybody. You at least watch my video on how I plan to 1000x my money. The choice is yours. Make the right choice. Join me. See what a different future you could have. See at least how I intend, how I plan to do the thousand X. So click on the link below, enter your email address, and I see you on the other side. Your Marcus Dan.